Hey guys, I got chronic depression magically lifts. This is a testimonial, and I've been getting some comments about some depression. Um, people have been having some depression and being unhappy, and um, I think this testimonial could help. Uh, you are the placebo, making your mind matter by Dr. Joe Dispenza. This testimonial here was really great. I really wanted to share this. Janice Schofield, a 46-year-old interior designer living in California, had suffered with depression since she was a teenager. She never sought help with the condition until she saw a newspaper ad in 1997. The UCLA Neuropsychiatric Neuro Institute was looking for volunteer subjects for a drug trial to a new antidepressant called Effexor. Schofield, whose depression had escalated to the point where the wife and mother had actually entertained thoughts of suicide jumped at the chance to be part of the trial. When Schoenfeld arrived at the institute, institute for the first time, a technician hooked her up to an EEG to monitor and record her brainwave activity for 45 minutes. And not long after that, Schoenfeld left with a bottle of pills from the hospital pharmacy. She knew that roughly, that roughly half the group of 51 subjects would be getting the drug and half would receive a placebo. Although neither she nor the doctors conducting the study had any idea which group she had been randomly assigned to, in fact, no one would ever know until the study was over. But at that time, that hardly mattered to Schofield. She was excited and hopeful. That after decades of battling clinical depression, a condition that would cause her to sometimes suddenly burst into tears for no apparent reason, she might finally be getting help. Schoenfeld agreed to return every week for the entire eight weeks of the study. On each occasion, she'd answer questions about how she was feeling, and several times she sat through yet another EEG. Not long after she started taking her pills, Schoenfeld began feeling dramatically better for the first time in her life. Ironically, she also felt nauseated, but that was good news because she knew that nausea was one of the common side effects of the drug being tested. She thought that she surely must have gotten the active drug if her depression was lifting and she was also experiencing side effects. Even the nurse she spoke to when she was returning every week was convinced Schofield must be getting the real thing because of the changes she was experiencing. Finally, at the end of the eight-week study, one of the researchers revealed the shocking truth. Schoenfeld, who was no longer suicidal and felt like a new person after taking the pills, had actually been in the placebo group. Schoenfeld was floored. She was sure the doctor had made a mistake. She simply didn't believe that she could she could have felt so much better after so many years of suffocating depression simply from taking a bottle of sugar pills. And she'd been even she'd even gotten the side effects. There must have been a mix up. She asked the doctor to check the records again. She laughed good naturally as she assured her that the bottle she had been taken home with her was the bottle that had been given Schoenfeld her life back. Indeed contained nothing but placebo pills. As she sat there in shock, the doctor insisted that just because she hadn't been getting any real medication, it didn't mean that she had been imagining her depression or her improvement. It only meant that whatever, she, whatever had made her feel better wasn't due to effects her, and she wasn't the only one. The study results would soon show that 30% of the placebo group felt better, compared to 52% of the group who received effects her. But when the rest of the data came out, it was the researcher's turn to be surprised. The patients like Schoenfeld, who had improved on the placebos, hadn't just imagined feeling better, they had actually changed their brainwave patterns. The EEG recording, recordings taken so faithfully over the course of the study showed a significant increase in activity in the prefrontal cortex, which is depressed patients typically has low, have low, very low activity. Thus, the placebo effect was not only altering Schoenfeld's mind, but also bringing about real physical changes in her biology. In other words, it wasn't just in her mind, it was in her brain. She wasn't just feeling well, she was well. Schoenfeld literally had a different brain by the end of the study, without taking any drug or doing anything differently. It was her mind that had changed her body. More than a dozen years later, Schoenfeld still felt much improved. How is it possible that a sugar pill could not only lift the symptoms of deep-seated depression, but also cause bona fide side effects like nausea. And what does it mean that the same inert substance actually has the power to change how brain waves fire? 
increasing activity in the very part of the brain most affected by depression. Can the subjective mind really create those kinds of measurable objective psychological changes? What's going on in the mind and in the body that would allow a placebo to so perfectly mimic a real drug in this way? Could the same phenomenal healing effect occur not only with chronic mental illness, but also with a life-threatening condition such as cancer? Wow. Okay, guys, that was chronic depression magically lifts. I really wanted to share that testimonial. There's quite a few testimonials here I really like. I'm going to start sharing these um, as long as everybody wants to hear about them or everyone's enjoying these. Um, questions, comments. Thank you, guys. Love you.